Okay guys, let's get started. Today's lab is a pretty straightforward and easy lab. Okay? So what we are going to do is we are going to draw magnetic field lines. So, um, what are field lines? Okay. So, if we have a magnet lens, we have a north pole, we have a south pole. Right? Now, field lines are a way for us to understand the, the strength of a magnetic field as well as a um, direction of the field. Now, you might wonder what direction, right? We don't really think about direction in magnetic fields. Now, since we have a north pole and a south pole, the way we define the magnetic field lines is from north to south, always. Okay. Now, the next question is, now I jumped the gun, I have drawn a field line. What is a field line? It's a construct, it's a model that we have built for us to understand, let's say, I want to place a small magnet closer to the magnet over here. Now obviously, north north is going to repulse. Okay, so this will kind of push this guy away, or at least will try to push this guy away. So field lines are a way for us to understand this process. In other words, how do we account for this force push? Right. So magnetic field gives us a way to look at how strong the push is or the pull is. If we have a south pole close by, it will get attracted to the north pole. So how do we see or how do we you know, assess the strength or in other words, how strong the push or pull is going to be? One. Two, the direction. Okay. So the direction comes by a small um, definition. Now for a moment, assume that you have a single unit node. Okay. Now if I were to let this go at this point, the path that it's going to take while it goes all the way to the south pole, that would be my field line. Okay. Now let's say I, I Keep this north pole very close to the north pole of this bar magnet and just let it go. And this is the path that it will take. Now, the field lines have this peculiar set of properties that we have to follow. Now, field lines gives the direction of the magnetic field, one. Number two is that they never cross each other. Okay. Now, I told you, this gives us the force, magnetic force, at a particular point. All these points, what would be the magnetic force? Now, that force is the sum force, in other words, sum of all the forces. Okay, so in other words, you cannot have another field line crossing each other because at every point you have a direction to this force and a magnitude to this force. 
So if you have two field lines crossing each other, we have a conundrum. In other words, we have an impossible case where we find at, at a particular point the force has two directions. That is a no-no. We cannot define that. It doesn't happen that way. Okay? So what we have is always field lines pretty much are not going to cut each other. Now when you draw this, when you draw the field lines today, just be careful because when you move the magnet around, by accident of course, you should not move it. But when you move it, sometimes that if you change the place, then all of a sudden you will see that one line will cross another line. That would be bad. So I'm going to show you how to kind of place this magnet nicely and, and keep it stationary while you finish all the field lines. Okay? And the other thing is this. The, the proximity of field lines okay, gives an indication of the strength, how strong is the attraction or repulsion depending on what type of pole or what side of a magnet you place in the field. Now when you go away from the magnet, they spread. You can see that the way I draw. I should draw this a little bit with a, I guess, uh, something like this. As you go away from the magnet, they spread. As you come close to a pole, see that? See what happens? The distance or separation is closer here, further away here. So the field, or in other words, the strength of the, the force is stronger here, weaker here. Okay? So all these things um, gives us information about what kind of a magnetic force um, is in uh, in the proximity, you know, close to the magnet that's given. Okay, so um, it's pretty simple, straightforward. I want to ask uh, one other thing that is relevant to our pre-lab questions. If I were to take a magnet, cut that into two halves, do I get a north pole and a south pole, or a north pole, south pole together? So, in other words. I have this magnet. I got drunk one day. I think that you know I don't have anything else to do. I want to do something for fun. Let me cut this bag. I'm um, um, a very bad day. Right? I gotta do something. Okay? Instead of uh, breaking something, I have this magnet. This is what I want to break. So I want to. I want to cut it into two pieces. So I get two pieces. Right? You are not as bad as I am, so you're good. <laughs> so, so what do I get? Do I get two pieces that each piece is a south pole and a north pole? Or do I get a combination? So this is one scenario. The other scenario is this. What is going to happen? This one. So you take a magnet, just cut, 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 cut. Every time you cut, okay, you always get a north and south. Okay, you cannot get a single north pole or single south pole. They do not exist, as far as we know, from all the physics, that they don't, they don't exist. So um, now field lines. Always come up with a direction. Do not forget that. You need to put the arrows. And they start from a pole and then move to the other pole. Okay, ladies. Start from a pole, move to the other pole. Okay? So remember that. So uh, today's lab, I want each and every one of you to do it individually. So because it's very simple and I have enough magnets for you to use. And you are going to use uh, you know, one, one set per, per uh, member for, for your group. Okay? 
So one thing that we don't have is we don't have horseshoe magnets, not that many horseshoe magnets, unfortunately. So um, that would be a, a limiting factor. It will take a little bit of time. Sometimes you might have to wait. Okay. First, let's um, let me come to a table and start.